Hey Nerd Jack Nation, and welcome to History Of. I'm your host and resident superhero nerd Aaron Waller, and this is a series where we do a deep dive into various comic book characters, both heroes and villains, and give a little bit more insight as to who they are and why they do what they do. And in today's episode, I want to talk about a character that's pretty slept on in the DC universe, and is also kind of new, but kind of old at the same time, but I'm also talking about a very specific version of that character, and he's also going to be getting his live action big screen debut in the next couple of years, and that's DC's Blue Beetle. Now there have been several iterations of Blue Beetle, so let's clarify that this episode will be about the more popularized third iteration of the character, Jaime Reyes. Jaime Reyes was created by Keith Giffen, John Richards, and Cully Hamner, and first appeared in Infinite Crisis number 3 in 2006, but wouldn't fully get to suit up as Blue Beetle until two issues later in Infinite Crisis number 5 in the same year. Jaime Reyes lives in El Paso, Texas with his father, mother, and little sister, and wants to help his father in his garage, but his father feels like Jaime should study and enjoy more of his childhood as long as he can. Parent goals, am I right? But Jaime feels a sense of responsibility to his family and friends, though he often complains about having to sort out their problems, he also gets a lot of strength and courage from their support. One day Jaime discovers the Scarab, a mythical object thought to have been destroyed that had given Dan Garrett, a previous version of Blue Beetle, his powers. Jaime picks it up, but not long after that is approached by Booster Gold, who's come to retrieve it, but to his surprise discovers that the Scarab has fused itself to Jaime's spine when he was sleeping. So Booster Gold really gets no choice and then ends up recruiting Jaime for Batman's assault on the Brother Eye satellite, as the Scarab is the only object able to locate it. Then using the Scarab's powers, Jaime is able to locate the satellite and help bring it down, to which he then suddenly disappears from the ship and is teleported by the Scarab to escape from the nearby Green Lanterns. Later in Blue Beetle's own series, Jaime would be seen fighting Guy Gardner's Green Lantern, who's been driven mad by his ring's reaction to the Scarab. And it's during this time that we also get a little bit more insight as to when the Scarab bonded with Jaime that he ended up fighting a metahuman and then he just randomly shows up in a desert, naked and having to hitchhike home. And upon returning home, he learns that he's actually been missing for an entire year because the Scarab transported him through another dimension. Now one of the big differences with Jaime as compared to other superheroes is that he actually shares his secret identity of being the Blue Beetle with his family and friends. Probably not the best idea, but I guess it makes sense to have a character do something a little bit different. Jaime eventually takes up heroing and meets Oracle, the Phantom Stranger, and Peacemaker during his early adventures and associates himself with a local gang of superheroes known as the Posse. And it's also during this time that he would go on to learn more about the Scarab, and that's actually an alien technology that's corrupted after magical influences during his first encounter with Earth. Later, Guy Gardner would return and reveal how the Green Lanterns and the Reach, a group of cybernetic alien supervillains, have been at war for a long time, but called it a truce, making the Scarab a protector and able to turn its host into a leader of the army, utilizing AI and acting as an agent of the Reach. Jaime Scarab, however, only has a partially functional AI leaving Jaime able to form an alliance with it and change the Reach's agenda in attacking Earth, to stopping a super weapon. But Booster Gold shows up just in time to save them both, and the bond between Jaime and the Scarab grows even stronger. Jaime would then later team up with the Teen Titans, first in Teen Titans Volume number 3, number 50, and then as Blue Beetle in Volume number 7, number 18, to fight Lobo, who was actually hired by the Reach. And after this encounter, Jaime would then get an invitation to visit the Teen Titans and possibly join them, despite his lack of training. He would eventually take this off in the Titans of Tomorrow Today storyline, but would discover that an alternate version of the Teen Titans had attacked Titans Tower and kidnapped members of the Justice League. Jaime would then prove himself to be instrumental in defeating the alternate versions of the Teen Titans, as well as teaming up to defeat Starro and many other villains before Robin finally offers him full membership into the Teen Titans. And of course, Blue Beetle would go on various other adventures and fights and stick around through the New 52 and DC Rebirth events, though nothing really would change for the character in terms of origin or how his powers and abilities would work. The Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle has mostly appeared in DC animated properties such as Batman the Brave and the Bold, Young Justice Invasion, and the DC animated films Justice League vs. Teen Titans and Teen Titans The Judas Contract. He's even appeared in video games as playable characters such as Injustice 2, Lego Batman 3, and the Batman Brave and the Bold, the video game. And Jaime's Blue Beetle has even appeared in live action once before, but that was in the 10th season of Smallville where he was played by Jaron Brandt Bartlett but he'll soon be getting his first solo film, which got an upgrade from an HBO Max debut to a big screen debut, where he'll be played by Cobra Kai's Sholo Mariduena. Now in terms of powers and abilities, Jaime is just a run-of-the-mill teenager, there's really nothing that special about him other than like his drive, his power, 
because his ability to stay hungry, how he devours, if you will. It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. But really all of his powers come from the Scarab. With the Scarab, Jaime can manifest a variety of powers of its own volition and even configure itself to form various weapons, like an energy cannon, sword and shield, grappling hook, and power blades. It can also produce wings to even allow Jaime to fly or act as an additional shield. And in the beginning, Jaime had very little control over the Scarab as it pretty much took over all the time. But as he asserts himself and forms a bond with the Scarab's alien AI, they begin to work together as a team. The suit is also extremely powerful in other ways as it's able to compensate for Jaime's digestive system so it can expel any waste or basically just make sure he's not hungry and even make organic materials out of Jaime's dead skin cells that it collects. But another interesting thing that the Scarab can do is basically go instant kill mode where it has this ability to go into infiltrator mode where it basically becomes taller, more muscular, grows spikes, and basically just goes ham without even having Jaime's permission. So basically it's like a super version of an already super suit. The best way that I can kind of describe the Blue Beetle suit, and this is going to totally date me here, is if you've ever seen like the 90s movie Star Kid, like it's like it's something he kind of like gets into, kind of not really, it's kind of more of attached to him. Kind of like a Power Ranger meets Star Kid, if that makes any sense to any of the people watching this episode, if this makes it to the cut. So those are some of the things you need to know about Jaime Reyes' Blue Beetle. Did you learn anything in this video you may not have known otherwise? Let me know you in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure to leave me any suggestions to any characters you would like to see on this series. Your suggestion might become next week's video. And also while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification so you miss on any future videos from me or the rest of the Nergenic team. And also be sure to give us a like and follow on Facebook so you don't miss out on any time we go live, any announcements, any news that we may have, or any time we have an article at Neurogenic.com. But in the meantime, if you want even more video content from us, be sure to check out these videos on screen, like my recent video talking about Cobra Kai and how it's cringy but nostalgia done right, or check out this playlist of other live streams that we've done in the past. I'm currently doing Boba Fett and Peacemaker at the time of this recording. Well, not simultaneously, but you know what I mean. I'm having weekly live streams of both of those shows, so be sure to check those out. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it, and we hope to see you in the next video.